Here at Via Travellers, we love Italy. The clues in our name. But we especially love the region of Tuscany. In many ways, a trip to Tuscany epitomises the authentic Italian experience. Tuscany is known for its beautiful rolling landscapes, its wonderful weather, traditional hearty cuisine, and sublime villages, towns, and cities. And it doesn't get much more sublime than the capital of Tuscany. Welcome to Florence, a city intricately woven with cobblestone streets, arched bridges, delicate threads of Renaissance architecture, and cuisine that'll make your taste buds dance the Darandella. Amid the echoes of centuries past, Florence promises the adventure of a lifetime, a cultural retreat like no other where history comes to life. Now the heartbeat of Tuscany isn't an enigma, but she can play hard to get for the research adverse. So where to begin unmasking her eclectic charm? When in doubt, do what we do, turn to the locals. It's from them we got a lot of ideas for this list. So get ready as we dive into top recommendations and hidden treasures. We're talking about the vibrant markets, the tucked away trattorias, and the wonders that await beyond the face of this renaissance beauty. Strap in fellow globetrotters, your love affair with Florence starts here. And if you want to enter into more trysts with other fantastic destinations, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more travel content. First up is an essential spot, especially if it's your first time in town. Positively draped in serenity and laced with history stands the towering Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore. Audible gasp! Painted in subtle pink, green and white hues, every faceted inch of its intricately designed marble facade is a feast for the eyes. It gets even better inside. Look upwards and you'll find yourself trapped in the enchanting dance of colours bursting from colossal stained glass windows. Still not satisfied? A climb to the top unveils a view of Florence that would leave da Vinci himself spellbound. Of course, heights aren't for everyone, but the view of this place cannot be missed. Luckily, you'll find this magnificent cathedral is almost surrounded by cafes where you can sup a cup of rich espresso, savouring the view of this living masterpiece. One of the most popular gathering spots in Florence and the epicenter of the city's historical and political scene is the Piazza della Signoria. This beautiful, oddly shaped square is surrounded by gorgeous architecture on all sides, and it's a great place to stop by if you're looking for an easy bite to eat. Surrender to the lure of artisanal gelato shops or terrace cafes, each vying for your attention with a seductive ballad of Tuscan flavours. But it's also worth hitting up if you're interested in the city's history. In which case, make a beeline for the boxy Palazzo Vecchio, Florence's town hall, which I'll get onto just about now. Imagine walking into a living painting. The Palazzo Vecchio is just that, and its grandeur is evident from a glance. In the heart of Florence's historic center, the old palace stands as an unmatched monolith of power, once home to the infamous Medici dynasty. Inside, it's a labyrinth of intricately frescoed chambers, secret passageways, and mesmerizing courtyards. As you cross the Hall of the 500, the power that once smoldered here is palpable, each painting narrating the story of Florence. Be sure to savor the view from Arnolfo's tower, where the panoramic view of the city is enough to leave you breathless, if the climb hasn't already. Looking for more fabulous town squares? Perhaps even more climbing? Well, my dear young thing, you're in luck. Hold your breath as you ascend to the hillside to Piazzale Michelangelo, Florence's high-altitude plaza, home to the best view of the city. If you've ever seen a tourist guide with a landscape shot of Florence, it was likely taken from here, and you'll see plenty of folks whipping out their cannons and Kodaks for the perfect snap. You won't have to look hard to spot the winding river Arno, and key sites such as Palazzo Vecchio, Ponte Vecchio, and the Duomo. But there is another reason people come here. This square is dedicated to the legendary Renaissance artist Michelangelo, and the square contains numerous bronze copies of his most famous works, including David in all his naked glory. Just mentioned a second ago, Ponte Vecchio is easily one of my favorite parts of the city. It's easy just to characterize it as just a bridge over the Arno, or even roll off tidbits like it's one of the most photographed bridges on the continent, or it was the only bridge not blown up by the retreating Germans in the Second World War. 
But this old medieval bridge really has to be seen to be believed. And like almost every other historical structure in Florence, it'll blow your mind with one look, and then do it all over again once you get inside. Inside a bridge? Yes, indeed. Because this is a merchant's bridge, much like the one in Erfurt, Germany, but with its own uniquely Italian flair. Lined with tiny shops and stalls on either side of the road, the bridge is essentially an enclosed marketplace. It's almost always a haven of activity and a top place to source some souvenirs, particularly jewellery. The bridge has famously been home to the city's finest goldsmiths for centuries. It also makes for a simply stunning location to enjoy a romantic evening stroll. Arty types definitely know this next one well, but for the rest of you, you gotta check out the Uffizi Gallery, one of the most famous art galleries in the entire world. The gallery's marble corridors are home to centuries of artistic genius, with special care devoted to Italy's Renaissance prodigies. The perfectly lit and meticulously preserved halls play host to a huge congregation of artistic magnificence. From Botticelli's ethereal portrayal of divine and mortal in The Birth of Venus to the shivering contrasts of Caravaggio's work, every step through the museum is a cosmic journey across a spectrum of colours, techniques and emotions. It's also deceptive in its enormity and you can easily spend an entire day here soaking in some of the greatest works man has ever created. I've already talked a bunch about amazing parts of the city to see breathtaking buildings and awesome architecture, so forgive me while I continue to wax lyrical on that. Because this next site, the Piazza del Duomo, is more than just the most popular tourist destination in the city. It's an architectural symphony of otherworldly grandeur and wonder. Every corner, every angle, anywhere you look, you are just surrounded by utter magnificence carved out of rock and stone. Of course, there's the Gothic facade of the aforementioned Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore, but there's also the elaborate flank of Giotto's bell tower, infusing the piazza with a gentle warmth, and Brunelleschi's dome looms imperiously over the square, arguably the definitive symbol of the city's Renaissance roots, and so much more. I've tried it, but it's impossible to just pass through here. At some point your feet will grind to a halt, your neck will cast your gaze up and around in your mouth, if not already hanging open in sheer awe of this plaza, will whisper, wow. If you're looking for a spot of green and a break from the bustle of awestruck tourists, venture into the verdant embrace of the Bobbly Gardens. Here you'll find the splash of beautiful fountains echoing among the cypress-veiled avenues, as well as sculptural masterpieces, immaculately manicured greenery, and stunning beds of blooming roses all embraced by the city's ancient stone. Whether you're seeking a sanctuary of solitude or having a quick jaunt with a boo, make sure you take in the panorama at the garden's highest point. The Florentine skyline, an unconquerable beauty, unfurls like a canvas splashed with a whirlwind palette of clay-red roofs, towering domes, and the gentle murmur of the River Arno. Huh. Maybe you aren't getting away from those awestruck tourists anytime soon. If you wish to further immerse yourself in the enthralling world of Renaissance artistry, the imposing Bargello National Museum does not look like the place to continue your journey if you judge it at face value but it is. Housed in a former barracks and prison, the relatively austere fortress-like structure scores a stark contrast with the astonishing artistic treasures it conceals within its robust walls. With timeless sculptures by Donatello, Michelangelo and Cellini, you can taste the tang of history hanging in the air, intertwining seamlessly with the subtle echoes of marching or chains. A stroll through the courtyard is also in order, giving you time to appreciate centuries-old Florentine craftsmanship juxtaposed with the stern, utilitarian architecture of this old fort. The awe-inspiring Pitti Palace wasn't just a big old house, but built as a grand symbol of Medicean power, and it's the best thing to close out our top ten. 
with its imposing stone facade, a silent testament to Florence's Renaissance era, I feel this masterpiece is arguably the best single structural representation of Florence. Doubly so if you count the gardens. Grand ain't the word. It's not, well, grand enough. You'll find yourself wandering through a labyrinth of ornate chambers and galleries, each adorned with unique eye-catching artworks. Step outside, you'll discover the Royal Gardens, an Eden designed for regal leisure, offering stunning views of Tuscan sunsets. And that's all we've got time for today, but there really is so much more to be explored in Florence. If you're making the trip and thinking of touring the city, plan for a few days to do it, because Florence is so stunning and so overwhelmingly beautiful, it practically beats you over the head with it. Be sure to take regular breaks to fuel up. Luckily for you, there's never a cafe, gelato shop, or delicious family-run restaurant too far away from any of these attractions. And it's with that tasty tidbit I'll be saying arrivederci. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Please like and subscribe for more, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.